everything else, and now they do the telemedicine for HIV and AIDS care also. And psychiatry. And psychiatry. That was the other one that they also did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how about uh, interactions with clients? Are all of them live, or do you use the store and forward capability of the telemedicine equipment? We do not use store and forward. Mm -hmm. We do real-time live audiovisuals. Mm -hmm. um, this is also important because I can speak about medical care, wherein medical care has to be on time, it has to be real time. So uh, we have not been using st store and forward. I would think that the store and forward would also um, be trouble with, with the reimbursement. I think it, 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 that would need to be part of that live mm -hmm. medical visit. Now, there is some capabilities for um, the information that you're gathering to be put into the EMR, uh, which the, the stethoscope readings and, and that like kind of thing goes, goes straight there. into the electronic med medical record. Okay. And our last question at the moment is asking if you have also used the telemedicine equipment for education with a group of clients or do you only utilize it for one-on-one -on -one encounters? This is a wonderful question, Christy. Uh, the question was that uh, do we use telemedicine equipment for group sessions versus one-on-one -on -one only? Telemedicine's limits do not include the group counseling. In fact, uh, we were talking, uh, Dr. Thomas and I were talking, and she had this wonderful idea about how prenatal care could be grouped into um, um, a one visit. Absolutely, yes. Uh, it could be used. So far, we are not using that. We are not using the group counseling. We are not using the group sessions also, but there is no reason for anybody to not do it. And we are actually planning on that one in that, especially nutrition education classes, smoking cessation classes, and uh, diabetes education classes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, such education classes especially uh, will be group sessions mm -hmm. and they will happen at Mayo. And we'll be, AAC will be in um, increasing our care through the IOP which will be group sessions. One thing that we are doing is that we're installing um, microphones that will come down from the ceiling to better uh, enable everyone in the room to be able to be heard on the microphone. So I think with some small modifications that uh, group counseling is definitely uh, a possibility and we're going to start doing it in September. Okay. Great. Uh, we have no more email questions or no phone calls at the okay. moment, but I certainly encourage folks out there if you're still watching and have a question to take advantage of the time that we do have left here to send us your questions. I have a question for Sandy. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to shut me up, otherwise I will not stop. You just keep right on going. <laughs> Sandy, no where do you think the telemedicine is going? Um, <laughs> as I said earlier, what, what I hope for this program is that we can eventually put a telemedicine suite in each and every county health department in the state of Alabama and, and for other states as well. Um, they, could, they could probably use this as a, as a model. Um, once we get a telemedicine suite, it doesn't have to be reserved for just HIV care. Any specialist that is lacking, like I told you about the um, health professional shortage areas in Alabama, any specialist that is not in that area can then, with telemedicine, go into their clinic and, and see a patient in any one of the counties in Alabama. Um, and I, I believe some of the counties have more than one um, mm -hmm. health department site, so that would just, it would put care right in everyone's neighborhood. So um, what this has done for MAO, as you know, um, you can see your patients in person in our clinic, and then they can walk right next door into the telemedicine suite and see a counselor. So, Absolutely. So instead of us sending people all over the place, and especially these people who don't have transportation, um, they come in once and they get everything they need in one location. Appropriately. Mm -hmm. And Sandy, one of the um, statistics that you, you showed earlier on one of the screens was that there were only 57 ID physicians in the whole state. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of calculating in our heads, I think only 10 of those right. are actually doing HIV care. This way, if we had uh, in access to telemedicine up in North Alabama, we can connect down to to talk to Dr. Bott anytime mm -hmm. that we 
we want to. And you also know if you if everyone noticed on the um, map, it looked like we had just not really gone into Mobile. But I think that there's a real growth area down in the Mobile region, um, the southwest r region of the state. Mm -hmm. So I also wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, MAO and the AIDS Action Coalition are working with the uh, Department of Nursing at UAB with an NIH grant. And this is to do rural mental health with um, HIV positive women. And uh, so again, we're, we're doing all kinds of collaborations and branching out in different, different forms um, throughout the whole state. Okay. Yes, Brenda. Um, do you think, or what do you envision as the impact of affordable health care on the industry? We could have gone all day without talking <laughs> about affordable health care. <laughs> um, you know, there are so many unknowns about affordable health care, but, um, you know, HIV care is in the cascade as far as um, being essential health care benefits. And I think that, that this will only increase our ability to, to see more patients. Don't you think, Dr. Bat? Absolutely, yes, I feel so, yes. And, Again, uh, normalizing HIV care in the in the doctor visit, and mm -hmm. um, but if we can and get our resources out there and and be able to help more people in the community, that's what we need to do. Okay. You've got a couple more questions that have come in. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, the first one is asking if you can review again the role of the in-person nurse and talk about their interaction both during the teleclinical visit and afterwards with the physician. I think that's absolutely. <laughs> I personally have been blessed with a wonderful, wonderful nurse um, in my uh, spoke sites. Um, the nurse visit is very vital mm -hmm. in telemedicine. Uh, it is similar to what it would be uh, if it were to be in-person visit. Hmm? But the nurse will actually talk to the patient and uh, get me the data and follow up with the patient. She will be present during the telemedicine visit. So she will actually sometimes will work as my hands on the, on the, on the distant side, uh, be it 100 miles away. Hmm? For example, if there is an abscess or something like that on a patient's body that needs to be evaluated. For example, if there is a need for uh, the range of motion to be tested. I don't use it exclusively or extensively, but in uh, certain times where there was a need, when it has come up as an ancillary question, uh, we have utilized. Plus, we do need uh, uh, the nursing staff to auscultate the patient so that I can hear the patient. Um, do the ENT scope, use the ENT scope or dermoscope and uh, uh, such things. Well, I believe in the state of Alabama, those duties have to be executed for a telemedicine encounter, um, have to be executed by an RN, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, but uh, if the um, laws were to change, uh, we can utilize other people who are trained in nursing also. Okay. Very good. All right. Next question. In building a budget proposal for your telemedicine application, what does a telemedicine suite in one of the health departments cost? Are there any matching funds that were sought? And if you could elaborate at all on that this person would be great. I can probably speak to that. Um, so the equipment itself, I think Dr. Bat talked about nine, about nine, ten thousand mm dollars -hmm. per site. So that would be double because you need, you know, one on each end. Mm -hmm. um, then the scopes are about five hundred dollars a piece. But you then, the big, the big reoccurring cost is the cost of the T1 um, between the two sites. Um, which for us in Huntsville, um, 1.5 or 3 meg, I act like I know what I'm talking about, I really don't, um, is about 500, and I, I believe I just signed a contract for $568 a month. Then we have the cost of the nurse, and we, um, we also, and so the space and that kind of thing. Where we went for our matching funds, again, we went to a lot of, in Huntsville, we have a lot of technology companies that like to be helpful in the community. So we went to um, Boeing and, and you know, some of our, our technology firms 
and banks, um, different foundations in Huntsville. And again, they were they have been responsive to it. Okay. Anybody else? No? Okay. But I think those are the only reoccurring costs. Mm -hmm. Mike, are you? Okay. Okay. Another question? Okay. Do you work with other facilities around the country to see clients outside of your service area? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I should say the question was that do we see clients outside of our uh, uh, agency or clinic? So far we have not because of the sheer logistics of that one. Uh, uh, but like I said, uh, if uh, all HIV care clinics in the state were to come together, we could create a wonderful telemedicine network wherein it will be a patient-centered medical home mm -hmm. so that any patient could be seen in any place and we will be sharing. See, we have to have to remember that success is by collaboration. Mm -hmm. Success is by collaboration. So uh, I hope that day comes soon. Very good. Uh, at this time, there are no more questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, you mentioned a portable unit. Could you expound on that a little bit? Sorry, repeat the it, portable unit. Portable unit. Ah, yes. So uh, in poly the polycom units that we use, uh, one is called. Uh, Actually, we use three different kinds. One is called the Polycom HDX 4500, which is a portable thing which, which comes in a cart. The other one is called uh, uh, Polycom HDX 7000, which is uh, uh, right now which is mounted on the wall. And we also use what is called as the Polycom uh, uh, um, uh, provider uh, uh, cart. So the, the portable cart will actually let us drag the telemedicine equipment with the video, with the audio sensor, with the, uh, the peripherals to the patient's room. Um, but it has to have the internet connectivity. But there have been some thoughts about utilizing LTE connection to make that happen. I have seen some prototypes of real portable, real small, tiny um, uh, food box sized uh, uh, telemedicine uh, units which are portable, which can actually be taken to the patient's house. Yes, and yes. Connect to the 4G LTE, and uh, it's not available in Alabama yet. Yeah. But uh, uh, some tremendous progress has been going on there. Robin, our Polycom representative, has talked to me about how it is it is being taken into the home for like home health care and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and it is completely portable, but not here. Well, that concludes our presentation, and if you think of any questions after the presentation, all of our, the panelists, and our contact inf information at Southern AIDS Coalition is available in the slides. As a reminder, the handouts for the presentation are available on the Southern AIDS Coalition website and the ADPH website. This program was recorded and also will be available on both websites within two business days. SAC greatly appreciates the time, information, and thoughtful presentation from Sandra, Dr. Bat, and Mary Elizabeth, and we thank you, our participants. Following this program, you will receive a short survey via email. If you could please take a couple of minutes to fill it out, it will help us to improve future presentations. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.